morning, dear friends. I am so happy to greet you this morning as we face this new day with new challenges and new opportunities and another day to glorify God in and through our lives. And before we therefore enter in today's activities, let us give ourselves to a few minutes of quietness. Be silent and hear the voice of God through his word as we meditate from God's word just a few minutes before we begin our life. Today's meditation also is taken from uh, Elijah's life, from 1 Kings chapter 17. Last two days, we have meditated on verse 1. And today and tomorrow, we will be meditating from verses 2 to 6. So let me read that passage for you, 2 to 6 of 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Cherith, in the Cherith ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the to Cherith ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. After Elijah had spoken to King Ahab, in that manner he spoke, two things were certain. Number one, a famine in the land. And number two, Elijah's life was in danger. What manner he used to speak to King Ahab? Verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, or before whom I stand, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few day, few years, except at my word. And so Elijah's pronouncement meant he needed to be hidden, unprotected, unprovided. From two dangers, from the famine and from the wrath of Jezebel. Now, Elijah's pronouncement was a judgment against the sin of Ahab and the nation of Israel's sin, wickedness, idolatry, and all abominations. And therefore, Elijah needed a place of protection where he needed to spend as long as God allows him in solitude. And so let us think of the solitude that God himself has provided for his prophet Elijah. He needed a solitary place, God's appointed place of safety. And uh, that place happened to be Sherith, a brook. And Sherith means separation. So, in order to be in that place of safety during this famine time, he needed to be hidden. He needed to separate himself from the outside world and just to be in that place which God has appointed for his prophet to spend the next few months. And it's a, almost a year he spent at this brook. Solitude was necessary for Elijah's safety. Jezebel is killing prophets after prophets. And by killing them all, he was hoping to get rid of Elijah. And that was 
her main target. Elijah was his, his uh, her main target. Because Elijah the prophet, the man of God, happened to be like a thorn in the flesh for her. God has provided us with a sherith of our own. When we need to be quiet and separate ourselves, what is our sherith? It is nothing but Calvary. The cross. The cross where the rock of ages was cleft for us. And uh, we can hide in that cleft of the rock of ages. That is where we find our protection, our safety. And it is that's where we can receive a new revelation of a higher level of life and faith and receive our orders our assignment that we need to fulfill on behalf of God. Solitude was necessary for his soul's health. First it was necessary for his safety, but then it also does wonderful good things for us personally. And sometimes it is necessary for us to go into our hiding place, solitude, for our own soul's health. That is where we get refreshed, renewed, strengthened, and we come out of these solitary places with a new, um, higher level of revelation and a higher level of understanding of God's plans and purposes. And he soon will be entering into chapter 18. I'm telling you why Elijah needed that solid solitude and that place of safety where he could be all alone with God. And remember the next chapter is chapter 18 where his supernatural display of God's power and God's wrath must bring the nation back to Jehovah. And to be equipped with God's presence with him, he must spend a certain time in solitude before he can display God's power in public. And uh, the effectiveness of uh, any servants of God's public life and ministry depends on how he spend alone in solitude in the presence of God. And without that preparation, my friends, we will not, will not be ready to uh, display God's power in public. And that the secret of uh, that power is in our secret place of a solitude where we and our God spend time together, receiving from Him the needed strength and energy and new levels of revelation and new levels of faith and understanding. You know, all great men of God must spend time in solitude before uh, we can be ready for public ministry. Let me name just a few. Moses, for example, he spent 40 years in the wilderness. It took 40 years for him to, 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 to unlearn everything that he thought that he knew in order for God's knowledge may take place in his life for the next 40 years. And after that, again we find him in solitude, but this time to receive the law from God, as he spent 40 days and 40 nights 
alone, right just in the presence of God on Mount Sinai. And then look at John the Baptist. He spent most of his life in solitude, where? In the jungles. And from there he will come out in the open and he will thunder for, to the people, God's message. And then consider Apostle Paul, three years of uh, uh, Arabian desert, three years of solitude, spending time. And it is there, during these three years, he received all the revelations and the gospel he preached, everything that he has written in his epistles, he received directly from God. And then consider Jesus himself. Before he appeared in public, for 40 days and 40 nights, he spent in solitude in the desert, where he confronted the devil. And it was from there he came out in the power and anointing and the fullness of the Holy Spirit and never looking back again. And then consider John the bit of a disciple. His solitude was the Isle Patmos. And it was there he was all alone. And it was there in that solitude as he came out of the solitude, he presented to the world, the Christendom, the book of Revelation. And in this modern time, after Jesus, men like John Bunyan, in the solitude of a prison, as he came out of the prison in that solitude, from that solitude, he presented to the world one of the best-selling book, number one in the world next only to Bible in those days, the Pilgrim Progress. And Hudson Taylor and other great missionary heroes, they all had their solitude places and time before they were used mightily and accomplished amazing things for the kingdom of God. And out of their places of solitude, they came forth with amazing, powerful revelations from God and equipped with such power and authority that they conquered the world of their time for the kingdom of God. And they gave to the world something very lasting, an inspiration and the, uh, the incentive and the challenges and equipped many uh, servants of God with a new vigor and determination and went forward and accomplished great things for God. In the words of, uh, of, of uh, um, one of the greatest missionaries, he said, Attempt great things for God and achieve great things for God. And in order to accomplish that, we need to have these solitary times with God. And those of you, who, we will consider this, we will, we will continue this tomorrow. As I close, let me tell you and encourage those of you who feel that you are in a solitary situation, place, and no voice of God, and you are all alone in that place. If you are wondering what is happening, this is what is happening. God has given you a time to spend alone in solitary places. And God wants to reveal to you something greater and higher revelation. That you may be properly equipped with his anointing and with his fullness and strengthen you as you come out of these days of quietness. Trust God to reveal himself and his plans for you, what he wants you to accomplish and give yourself to doing it. 
God bless you as you take this solitude and solitary situations from God equipping you preparing you and giving you an opportunity to receive from him his revelation and his anointing and his message that you may go forth and change the world around you for this may the lord bless you and the holy spirit use you father i thank you for hearing us bless my brothers and sisters and let them know that it is you who has arranged this time of solitary silence thank you in jesus name amen this is a great day my friends enjoy this day and have a wonderful day